Bless and love, my lords. Welcome to our Founder Fridays live interview this week. Uh, I'm joined with our co-founder of uh, the Red Line Project, Dudley. How's it going, mate? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we was a little bit... Some errands Hello? and you just got them. back to start it, start the show. So, yeah. Okay. Here we are now. <laughs> yeah. Hello Thanks, God. And welcome. <laughs> uh, but everything's great. Uh, I mean, it's and... Friday. And I was trying yep. to get our music uh, quality. I have some jacks, I have some uh, reduction and everything, but the only one uh, piece is missing. So for the next show, I hope the music will be super clean and straight audio in input. So let's hope for the best. Fantastic. <laughs> Great to hear. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, for this week, we have uh, an incredible guest. Um, he's considered an he is, of course, uh, an OG uh, on the space, and he has founded uh, many projects uh, with a long tenure on the space. Um, so uh, welcome, everyone, uh, Mr. Carlini. Hey, mate, how's it going? Hey, it's going great, thanks. Good to be here. Um, we've obviously uh, had back and forth for years at this point, and it's nice to link up and, and chat about that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, well, uh, the situation on crypto right now is uh, really crazy, uh, but I'm very excited uh, to to have you here with us and chatting. We have uh, we have talked, I don't know, for uh, two years now online so many times, and we never had the opportunity uh, to to chat before. So yeah, very nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you too. I'm. I'm more of a typer, I guess, anyway, so I was, <laughs> I was all right. Um, okay, so uh, let's start uh, from the beginning, if you want, uh, without sharing uh, too much info about doxing yourself or anything. Um, who was Carlini before he found crypto? Uh, he was Carlini. <laughs> uh, before, before crypto... Um, I was a professional gambler, um, so I was I was effectively taking bonuses on casinos and sports books, and just working out if they were uh, EV plus. So if I expected to make money by doing them, or if there was a certain way I could make money, um, they like to call us bonus abusers. Uh, bonus abusers. Um, so basically casinos or sports books would put out promotions to try and lure people in and they they made it valuable to you because they knew sort of psychologically if the first time you gamble you got a win or the first time you gamble with them you get a win then that's your lucky place or that's you know where you think you do the best or you just get addicted to gambling and they suck you in and long run they make a lot of profit off you. But if you're only doing offers that you're supposed to, you know, mathematically you should win, um, then you you just make money, I guess. So that's what I was doing before. I have uh, friends that uh, made millions doing that uh, for real. Uh, not uh, just the bonuses, you know, they were hunting. You get like a hundred percent bonus. So they would find events that uh, they would be like. Uh, paying like two uh so whatever was the the result one or the other they would uh, make double of the of uh, um of what they deposited so if they deposited 600 they would be paid uh, 1200 times two um so yeah it was uh, very lu uh, lucrative and um in the early days, uh, the, the betting companies were uh, super relaxed. There was no control, nothing, right? Yeah, so I think I started in 2014 uh, is when I started gambling. And before that, I was was in DNA testing. And before that, I was in uni. So that it, it was pretty quick. I, I effectively had one job in DNA testing and then straight into full-time gambling. There was like a, a crossover um, and it got to the point where I was actually losing money by going to work because gambling was making so much 
yeah. that I could have so much more work, but I was at work, so I just had to quit and um, go into gambling. And then I guess effectively that led me to crypto, which is, you know, the biggest casino of all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, um, gambling has a little bit of like a, a bad reputation and rightfully so, but um, there's a big percentage of people that are doing uh, educated guesswork and um, they are very, very proficient and efficient at it, you know, so there's definitely a lot of value there. Um, and since you found uh, crypto, uh, did you feel like you entered the best casino of your life? <laughs> Ethereum, actually. <laughs> not, not in 2018, 19 or 20. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. But eventually it became the, the best casino, right? <laughs> well, yeah, the, the lows and the highs are a lot lower and a lot higher than a normal casino. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so you coming into the space uh, of crypto, uh, obviously you found uh, crypto kitty super early. So how, how did that happen? Um, well, I was already into crypto and excited by ethereum i i first bought bitcoin i'm i'm not entirely sure if it was 2014 or 2015 i'm not actually trying to figure it out at the moment because i have an old wallet um with the info that's only on um a, a pc that's now kind of busted uh, I can't log into the, the the PC turns on and then when I click my uh, Windows profile, it just does nothing. Uh, it doesn't have any, you know, crypto actually on it, but it's for, you know, looking at taxes going back, um, which is why I'm slowly getting to it. If I had money on it, I'd be, you know, taking the hard drive down to my dad, who's software engineer and be like, get me, get me my money now. But for taxes, I, I won't I won't bother him. Um, so I was, I was already, I was aware of crypto and, uh, excited by it, but gambling was, you know, I was having discussions with other gambling people about crypto, um, because when, when you're already in a very, when, when you're accustomed to risk, you know, what's, what's more risk. You, you like talking about risky investments when you're making quite a lot of money a month and you're like, where shall I put this money? And it got to the point where some people were going all in on Bitcoin um, and just sort of quitting gambling. And I, I didn't like that at all because you're not doing anything with the money. You're kind of just buying and waiting, I guess. Um, and my view was that you had to do things with the crypto. And that's where Ethereum... Um, seem much better to me because i was instantly actually doing things on ethereum i'm not i wasn't just sitting there and holding the bitcoin so i was funneling some sort of gambling excess into crypto slowly disagreeing with the people who were completely giving up gambling because you still needed a gambling float and it felt to me that was um, still a much better place to hold your funds and then slowly gambling got worse and crypto got more exciting with uh, with everything that you could do on Ethereum. And then when I found crypto kitties and NFTs, the, the, the gamer inside me kind of clicked. And that's the thing. Uh, the, the early days of getting introduced to NFTs, if you weren't into, if you weren't, uh, say, a crypto punk claimer, um, it was actually a using working NFT game. You know, it's not triple A, but you could actually do stuff and you could buy and flip cats and breed them and, and do all these different things, which I think kind of spoiled us a bit because that was 2017 and we were actually using our NFTs where quite a lot of people who came in in 2021 were just, it was just pure buy and sell, buy and sell, go from collection to collection where we only had this one collection to focus on really because um, the the sort of distribution of community within NFTs was so heavily crypto kitties that it is 
it's almost impossible to compare now with how everyone's so split. It was like if you go back and look back at the Discord chats, it was ninety nine percent crypto kitties. It took crypto punks until the middle of twenty twenty one to have as many posts in their Discord from uh, the middle of twenty seventeen to the middle of twenty twenty one, so four years to equal the amount of posts in the crypto kitties discord 2017 december one month it was everyone was there that was the nft community it was very active um and i guess that's where i got hooked hooked into what, NFT. what was your mentality back then that is different now um i cared more about daily profits um at that point we we were we were basically breeding cats for it was about two or three weeks so from the start until i guess prices declined heavily and we went into a horrible bear market um but like i was trying to make an ethereum a day um eve was about had just gone over a thousand dollars for the first time maybe it was on the way to a thousand it was it was pumping so this was december 2017 um and it, it was about the daily profits and then as soon as the free money turned off i didn't it, it didn't deter me i guess i still i wasn't trying to make a profit i was i was already hooked and i was then looking more at what is an NFT? And that's where the discussions about the future started with people that stuck around during the bear, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you also got uh, very big uh, people uh, into the space like Pranksy and Nate Alex uh, early on uh, with CryptoKitties, right? Uh, so I didn't, CryptoKitties got Nate Alex in, but I didn't. I, I met him when he joined. I didn't get him in, but pranked oh, him oh, yeah. about NFTs and said, hey, come play CryptoKitties. So I knew him before I knew about NFTs, I guess, would be the way to describe. But a lot of a lot of the you know big names that people would know now are people that I spoke to regularly back in Discord back in the day and even people that have gone on to go and do um i guess massive things that i i they didn't come in to say my friendship circle that i would talk to daily but i spoke you know hours and hours and hours with uh jihos of uh axi infinity and psych out the um the the two guys who went and joined axi infinity really early i spoke to the uh open sea founders back when open sea wasn't a thing and there was Back in that day, there was no marketplace. So if you launched an NFT project, you had to have the ability to buy or sell the NFT on your own website just because there was nowhere else to go. Uh, and just just looking back at... You can, I mean, you can still go into the CryptoKitties Discord and just search these people's names and see what they were chatting about in 2017 and then go and see what they've gone on to build. And it's like, wow, they really did believe then and then did which is pretty impressive. Yeah, and uh, a, a lot of people don't understand that uh, um, some accounts with, uh, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of uh, followers uh, back then were uh, like uh, regular people uh, are nowadays joining discords and talking about the dreams and uh, what they wanted to build. And this is how connections uh, start in the space by linking up with your peers and discussing and executing on great ideas, right? Yeah, um, both so, Nate and Frank mm -hmm. have over 100,000 followers and both of them were doing, you know, one, two, three, four, five dollar flips on CryptoKitties. Um, they didn't come in with lots of cash, uh, which a lot of people assume i guess and when you look back at the people who did come into crypto kitties with a lot of cash n none of them have done as well it's um it's quite interesting to see that the people that actually got involved and did 
have done so much better than the people who came in with the Bitcoin mentality of buy and hold because mm -hmm. they didn't experience, they didn't learn. They just they just bought their cats, vaulted them, and then thought, oh, I'll come back in 10 years. And sure, they might do well in another, how long even is that, you know, four, five more years. But it, it doesn't look likely at this point. And the people that were involved and really tried and learned and, you know, tried to really get involved in the culture there are plenty that have done very well in contrast uh why do you think the the crypto kitty project uh, uh never uh, gained any more interest than the original uh time it got um well i guess it it went pretty actively for over two years so it had a lot of Uh, in, engaged followers, not quite as big as its um, original sort of that first month, which was wild. But I guess because right now you want stores of value over history, and there are so many crypto kitties that you know they're not. All, it's not about pumping the floor, which is where a lot of the value comes from now. I say value, that's not value, but that's is is perceived value, I guess. And Dapper moved on to flow, so there's there's no one really to pump the bags as such, and there's no future utility, which is always um something that you know, people need to be able to chat to each other and go, Oh yeah, but this is coming and because that interests them and they think that in this future, there's maybe the possibility that the price will go up because of that future thing. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned Dapper. Uh, so from CryptoKitties, let's jump to TopShot. And this is where I originally met you and uh, all the other big NFT people. So uh, when I came in, I was lucky enough to be to enter the, um, the TopShot beta. And uh, we were we spent, I think it was 2020, from July, from, I don't know, maybe earlier, from May to, I don't know, August daily trading <laughs> moments on that Discord with uh, all the core NFT people. Um, and it was great. But um, do you think there was uh, any mismanagement of the, of the CryptoKitties uh, project that uh, probably maybe uh, showed some kind of repeating pattern to NBA Top Shot? Um, I, I guess what I learned from Crypto Kitties was to listen to what they say, um, because with Crypto Kitties, they did actually tell us their intentions. Like they, they told us there's, there's articles from back then with, it wasn't actually Dapper Labs, they were called Axiom Zen back then, but they were, they were giving interviews because people had suddenly spent, you know, hundreds of thousands on founder cats and, people were panic buying the floor and, and all of this and they were telling us in interviews that their goal was three to four dollar cats which obviously now you know they've succeeded because their their view has always been to show what the blockchain can do and bring in the masses and you can't bring in the masses if your floor is a hundred thousand dollars but you can if your floor is two three four dollars so they were telling us yeah, that... sorry sorry to interrupt you there and pause you there but like we have seen this narrative uh repeating on nfts a, a lot of times and it has been proven sort of wrong uh in the sense that uh there's there are be better methods than just like um oversupplying and uh, dropping prices uh do you think uh that they didn't uh, look into it or they stuck with the narrative or uh, is it not the narrative? What do you think? Well, it depends on your goals, right? Because that, well, what you've just said there makes sense if your goal is for the floor price to go up. If you want everyone to make money, but if everyone's making money, someone has to be losing money. So I guess from their view, They just want to be able to sell things and hopefully create something that people want without worrying about the floor. Um, but they, they said similar with Topshop. They basically said, we're going to supply until people stop buying these packs. 
And we did see that before the bull run. There were packs that they burnt because people just weren't buying them uh, in 2020. Um, were Eastern Coast, Western Conference, or something like that. One of those packs didn't sell out, um, and they they got rid of them. And I, that was probably the turning point for us in 2020, where they slowed down, making you know the stuff that we were holding more valuable when everyone else turned up because the numbers were smaller. Um, and I've, ultimately, I think Topshop did what it did because the website failed. No one could buy packs because whenever they tried to sell packs... We were crashing the website. I remember lots of frustrating nights trying to buy packs early 2021 and coming away with nothing and just go, oh, I'm just going to bed because, you know, I like free money, but not that much because it's 3 a.m. I've been trying to buy packs since 8 p.m. <laughs> this is insane. And because people were waiting to buy these but couldn't, they just went, they, they had all this you know, dapper fund money that they were then going to the marketplace and buying, which was pumping the market and then increasing the demand for the packs even more because people just saw all this free money happening. Um, it was pretty wild. It was, it was, it was never going to work like a, you know, like a, a fixed 10 K board apes, uh, another project at that level, you know, Penelope's country club, these sort of things, the, the top blue chips, it was never going to be like those. Yeah, my personal um, complaint to all of this is that they created uh, a lot of uh, unnecessary complexity again. And uh, like, as a basketball fan, I don't see a lot of like uh, collections, like a lot of packs. Like, I see no reason for them to um, to exist. Um, I can't remember. It was a yellow one. From the strip or something, something like that. Uh, uh, the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it, I think that's an where do your where do your goals align as project founders and there's their their primary goal was probably to show off flow, mm -hmm. being obviously the ones who created it and making others want to come to flow. So just constantly having things to sell probably led to all those different packs, I imagine, because yeah. they're going to continuously sell packs. Yeah, from a business standpoint, uh, a lot of things make sense. Uh, but uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see how that develops in the future. I know you are, uh, you, you still have moments in there? I, as long as you look at evaluate.market, I am the number one ranked net worth top shot individual by quite some way mm -hmm. well <laughs> so yeah you you have a I will a add <laughs> that it is completely fake because i have it, it says my value value of my account is something like 32.2 million dollars uh in top shot but i have 32 Derek rose from the tops and their floor price is one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so I have thirty-two million dollars of Derek Rose. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, I remember when I came in there, I was an absolute plebeian, an absolute noob, and I was super pissed. I couldn't buy um, what was it, sandbox, and I just bought. I had the tweet to buy. Um, sandbox land and i couldn't and i was tilted and i bought the uh, legendary packs and i hit uh, lebron number one uh, oh yeah the cosmic uh it was uh, Cos i was shaking oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so i remember i came to the chat and i was confused because i was like yeah i thought uh roham said that all of them will have serial one or two so they don't compete with each other but i was mistaken like i overheard something in the wrong way and uh yeah it was uh since then i was like that's why i spent so much time and uh, was so excited by it. it it really meant something to me uh but unfortunately i never saw any interest on that card do you think uh in the future might uh, the value of that card might raise 
Oh, you never you never sold it. You still have it. Yeah, I, I I have it because I never had a real offer. I wanted one million plus at least for it, and nobody ever offered me that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> maybe a bit high even for the top of the ball um <laughs> I, if if they're a success that's going to be one of if not the card most kiss a card moment that you'd gamble on like i'm mm-hmm. guessing 23 might as well because of uh it being his number but yeah I've, i mean you could probably sell that for but he changed the number, right? He changed it to six now. So. Oh, is he say? I, I mean, I'm, I still think you're able to sell it for, you know, at least how much were the packs? Like two fifty, maybe. Yeah. Uh, at least a hundred x. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, the previous high ceiling, but a lot of uh, other LeBrons went for that uh, without being number one, but. Uh, yeah, for now that that should be <laughs> uh, fair evaluation, I guess. Uh, okay, so uh, after Top Shot, what happened for Carlini? Where did you move to? Um, well, it wasn't like I went to Top Shot um, mm-hmm. and then went to something else. I was always involved in yeah. all NFTs, so I actually sold quite a lot of punks to get into top shop um which you know sounds crazy to say but i i did do better in top shop than if i just held the punks i think maybe not if i sold them at the pico top and traded perfectly and all of that do you uh, still have punks uh scattered around yeah so i i have lots of wallets where i keep different things because I, I don't like to sell from my main wallet unless it was like an airdrop or something like that. Mm-hmm. And like I, I considered selling a doodle yesterday just because I had to I had to pay a, a bill in USDT and I I'd withdrawn everything because of everything that's going on with FTX. And I was like, right, okay, what am I gonna do to, to pay this? And I, I saw an offer on a doodle that would have covered it all. And I was I was like, sure, I kind of think they'll probably go down a bit and I could buy back in lower with sort of the market, everything that's going on. But then I was like, I can't sell mine on my public address. So I actually ended up selling something different somewhere else in a different wallet and a, co- a couple of airdrops on my main wallet. Um, but I just I just like keeping stuff spread out so it's it's both a security and i guess a a a reputation thing i don't want to be seen as a dumper even though i'm dumping (laughs) that's a very that's a very nice approach man i like it (laughs) Uh, i also created a couple of other wallets but i'm not hiding they are mine you know (laughs) but maybe i should uh, create some more anonymous ones yeah, I guess hiding, like I'll, I'll link stuff, you know, I'm not, and, and you know, the UK government know they're all me, it's it's nothing, annoyingly, I, I have so many wallets, I actually have to manually ask um, Coinly to up their limit, <laughs> because <laughs> putting them in broke the, I, I had this huge list of wallets in the spreadsheet. And I, I'd set up um, sort of like an auto copy tool to to put them into Coinly and copy it over. So I just left my PC, walked away, and came back to this cap that I'd hit, and we had to ask them. So I'm, it, it's not secret as such. Like I'm, I'm sure you know Zach, Zach XBT could link them all. You know, I'm not, I'm not hiding it so much. It's just so that I can happily sell stuff without worrying too much. I guess. Uh, it's, and it's not like I'm tweeting out, pumping something, and then selling secretly. It's just like I saw yesterday when I'm, you know, maybe need some funds because of an event like this. I would have preferred to have that doodle somewhere else so I could have sold it, paid the bill, and then bought back in later. Um, but but it was it was on my public wallet, so I had to think again. You just got to. I guess I have to think about my reputation a bit and yeah. 
I also happy. understand yeah. that because uh, the other day I wanted uh, some cash and I also accepted some offers. So I get some cash fast, so it was like a quick dump. And immediately my friend started DMing me <laughs> <laughs> and fucking shit. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I accepted really some top shot offers the other day and I got tweeted by two different people. I just direct tweets in the public. They started with at Carlini 8 NFT um, and just said, oh my God, what a noob. You've just accepted 700 for these two. I would have paid 720. And I'm like, my guy, you don't understand this. I, I don't care about your $20. <laughs> <laughs> It was the ease of just selling them. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's a completely different perspective. They they don't really get it, but uh, yeah, I, I completely understand. Um, okay, and uh, so um, of course, before I didn't mean that you left Topshot for uh, to do other things. I, I just. Uh, um, sometimes use the wrong words, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So at the time uh, that the, the Top Shot mania was uh, reaching to uh, to an end, and there was a bull market, you co-founded uh, the NFT boxes, right? Yeah. So that was our first sale. It was actually the first day of January 2021. So we we co-founded it. 2020 December and sort of worked up to this first drop uh, at the end of January. So uh, when we when we started, Top Shot was still pretty wild, and that's where quite a lot of I got quite a lot of messages where their first Ethereum NFT was NFT boxes. So we created this myself and Pranksy created a project where you would buy a box, the NFT box, and then after um, maybe two weeks of owning the box that you bought in the sale, about 10 pieces of art or, or NFTs would come out. Um, and we'd work with uh, different names in the space uh, and different projects. So Sandbox, for example, always put an NFT into the box. Pranksy had a good relationship with, um, I think it was their CEO, uh, CEO Sebastian, I think, uh, I think that's his role. Um, and they would... They would create a piece every month that all the holders would get and we'd work with. There was always sort of like, it was like going to a gig. There'd be a headliner and then um, other artists who the headliner thought would work well with their theme. So uh, Coldy was the, the, the original, the Genesis um, drop. Uh, and then we'd had other name X copy uh, was probably the most notable one, I guess. Um, and it's, I ended up leaving after um, a few months just because myself and Pranksy wanted to take it a different way. And that's uh, why I ended up with um, founding uh, Penelope's Country Club. But it's still going now. And there's currently a Josie and a Hackatow drop, I believe. Um, so, yeah, still still going well. Mm -hmm. Would you characterize it as like amicable divorce? You guys are still friends, right? Yeah, yeah, we still chat. Um, we just, we just basically wanted different things from the project because our, our roles were pretty defined. Like I was um, like sorting out the technical side and talking to the community all the time, and Pranksy was sorting out the artist side um, and arranging, you know, who would be in the boxes and then marketing it because I knew I couldn't really sell it and i knew he could and he had the connections to uh, get big artists in so i was always talking to the community and he was always talking to the artists so we just had um a, we, we just wanted different things i guess i wanted to focus on what i was doing he wanted to focus on what he was doing which meant that we couldn't go the way either of us wanted so i i ended up selling my shares to him probably it was a uk uh, company, so we had to go through, you know, lots of regulations and lawyers and valuations and stuff. Uh, but it was, it was pretty quick in the grand scheme of that world, I guess. Sold it and then moved on. Yeah, uh, amicable. Yeah, things are pretty streamlined in the UK. Sometimes I'm envious of that. It, it didn't feel like it at the time. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> 
well uh, you should be grateful for <laughs> <laughs> for it man uh but uh yeah and um then pernelopes were, were born right it's sort of like after that on the timeline uh a few months later or how how long after that did you um get the uh pernelopes uh, launched the day i officially sold the company mm-hmm. or my shares in the company um and that that is what had been delaying the launch um up until that point uh No, we minted out the day I sold the company. We'd actually launched before, but I couldn't launch it. Well, I'm sure I could have launched it at me, but I didn't want to because I was still publicly seen as working on NFT boxes. And I was still helping and doing bits here and there and sort of pranks would come and say, what did you do when this happened? And, I, you know, I'd, I'd walk him through it. So it wasn't that uh, I just walked out. But I was working on Penelope's we'd launched and it wasn't me. I was top cat, you know, it was an Anon founder. Um, just because I didn't want to be seen as working on NFT boxes and then launching another project. But then it came out uh, that I'd sold and it was like, okay, look, this has been going on a while. I've actually been doing this. And then that was the day we um, minted out about 18, well, it was probably more than 18 months ago uh, at this point. Okay, I didn't know that a uh, little piece of lore that you started it like like sort of like pseudo anon like uh, Nate did with uh, squiggles. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's really fun, uh, and it was because for the um, for the sale to go through uh, makes good sense. Um, but uh, how would you describe uh, the Pernelope project for someone who's never heard it before? Um, have, have they heard of NFT projects before? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so I guess uh, I would describe Penelope's as a um, community-focused NFT project where we actually mean community, uh, where we focus on what NFTs can actually do. So we're what we're really trying to do is push the space forward by trying... Um, things that seem fun and cool and actually, you know, showing what NFTs can do. Um, so I guess examples would be we we started with the Kitty Vault where we, um, we bought a load of NFTs that the community own. Uh, so it's like a, a group ownership of this. We, um, I think it's sitting... Our community guy has actually been on holiday for two weeks, so he's going to come back to a burning crypto, uh, burning crypto uh, community. But when he left, it was worth about 800 Ethereum, which is how much we minted for. So we're quite proud that we've uh, managed to take this collection to the same value as our original mint. Um, we did things like uh, pay people to use our profile picture, Uh, on Twitter, so sort of showing how NFTs and advertising and sort of building that community link together. We we then did eight, eight different airdrops where the airdrops can be redeemed for a physical item. So, for example, we airdropped hoodies um, that we're, you, you can burn 10 of them and you actually get this physical hoodie that's linked to IYK which is means your hoodie is an NFT. Uh, like I'm just doing a quick overview instead of going uh, deeper, deeper in, but that's, that's a pretty cool thing um, to chat about. And our, our grandma NFT drop, which was, it was a bit like say the board ape kennel club dog sort of level of NFT within the project. If you own the same number NFT, for the Penelope collection, as you do grandma, the grandma would change to holding a, a picture in front of her with that Penelope in, you know, like a, a proud grandma holding the NFT. And that's all done sort of automatically. That's not us doing centralized stuff. That's two IPFS collections that the the code then pushes one way or another, depending on your own wallet's holdings. Uh, and then recently we're doing... Um, 
I guess, much grander things. We're, we've just released our, our own token yarn, which yields to the NFTs. I don't like any of this um, toxic, not selling, reward staking style stuff. Just just reward for owning, uh, which we're then going to allow you to mint an NFT with uh, our tier two collection. So that's higher than the grandma, lower than the Penelope. Um which is sort of an ever-evolving um, collection. So only the first 3,000 are available now and more will come that all look different. And then we have, we're, we're releasing Land soon, which is an NFT that you use our token to level up. So you will, you will put this yarn that we give you for free into the land and you'll see that land grow and sort of you compete against people and get rewards and... Um, you, it's it's effectively a yarn sink that we've created that will have sort of future benefits within the ecosystem when you get to certain levels. So it's just a we're just constantly trying to build you know extra things and follow the trends and create our own, uh, which I think we're doing doing quite well. Uh, what do you find uh, super challenging? Um, in this space as a founder, uh, especially with your, um, you know, uh, with your tenure in the space, um, what are your complaints? Let's say, what would you like to be uh, better? I guess the 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 big the big issue is that I want to improve NFTs. I want to really keep, continue pushing. Um, creating different utilities and use cases and really thinking about what future we're actually shaping. Whereas I know if if I really wanted to pump the floor short term, there are, there are different actions I would be taking. Um, you know, instead of being 90% building out the project, 10% marketing, I would be 90% marketing, 10% building out the projects, getting the right people to say the right things. It, it basically compromising my morals, I guess. Hello. Oh, let's get everyone back in. Oh my God. It's. Uh, hey. Man, it's heartbreaking. It was such a good uh, conversation. Hey, 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 go dog. Sorry, my dogs are jumping. <sighs> <clears throat> yeah, Martin Carlini. It was like a first time oh, we got like completely rocked. I don't know. It's, yeah, uh, happens. Apologies, everyone. It was uh, it was not us. It was uh, evil Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, complaints to Elon. To Elon. Yes. Uh, thank you to everyone for uh, being here today and listening to us and. Uh, we are really, really sorry for uh, disconnecting. Uh, we, we, we will uh, resume back shortly. We will just allow uh, one, two minutes for uh, <laughs> people to join again. I put out the tweet. Um, yeah. Uh, what was the final thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, you were... Uh, uh, Carlini was talking about uh, that uh, his uh, goal was not uh, to pump the floor and get the the right people to say the right things, but instead of uh, building a solid foundation, right? Yeah, Carlin is with us now. He's okay, back. Okay. He's back. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Should I should I just go back in, or should I? Should yeah, I... yeah. Uh, do you do you have your train of thought, and we can pick it up from there? Sure, I can make it up. It's okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. My. Uh... My goal is to, I guess, build something that will be here, you know, for the long term. Something that will be notable for multiple NFT reasons. I don't, I don't just want it to be, oh, it had a high price this one time, and then you know, people, people just linking the chart of it going to zero over, you know, in five years' time. They're just linking it at zero. The, the goal is to build something where you can actually point at 
this is where people pushed NFT subdomains really properly first. This is where people showed what they can do. This is where people showed the power of dynamic NFTs plus a token and how you can actually reward your community that way. Uh, and, you know, I'm trying to build something that really helps other build, other people build off as well. So I, I'm always looking at every project that's doing anything mildly interesting just to try and see, you know, what they're, what they're doing. Do I think it'll work in Penelope's? I, you know, one of the things I probably say the most is if I see something cool, I'll quite happily steal it if it works for us. Um, I'd obviously give, you know, full credit. This is where I got the idea, all of that. Um, but we also practice that in reverse as well. So our our, um, our subdomain contract, before it really gets into it, I think it's like line 50 or something, says this should work with all ERC721s please feel free to use it because the the theory is if someone else takes that and makes it better then if they take it and we agree we can you know take it back and make it better ourselves and then someone else can take it and make that better again and it's just constantly pushing the space forward instead of just us which is what marketing does um, and we have seen, you know, quite a lot of people take on uh, subdomains recently. And I think some people have cut corners and made made it quite a lot worse when they should have just copied what we did. Like some people have made them borderline pointless. Um, but, but others have really, you know, tried and and are, are embracing them. And it's, it's great mm -hmm. to see. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And... Uh... You know, uh, also in our project, not just the stuff we are innovating, but the stuff we are uh, stealing from others. Um, uh, we also add our own spin or we will credit, of course, the project that uh, inspired us. But uh, yeah, if we, through our process, make it a little bit better, it's ready for someone else to borrow and make it a little bit better and then we can borrow it back or someone else. So I completely, completely agree there. And this is how we also see it. And uh, going back to what you mentioned earlier, that uh, starting in this space, you were more interested in uh, like the daily profits. Um, I, I completely can relate to that, especially uh, I wasn't uh, that uh, wealthy, not, nor that I am nowadays, but uh, I am grateful for what I have. Uh, definitely not at your level. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, it was important to me. Well, uh, after, after I, I figured that one out, uh, things became different and more interesting. And you get an opportunity to meet yourself and what your project means to you and what is the goal. And, uh, yeah, when you ask those questions, then you realize that this is your life's work. This is, this will be etched in, in the blockchain history forever and um, your personal experiences and wins stay with you, but this stays with everyone and sort of like changes priorities. And uh, I, I can, at least this is how it was for me, you know, but I can totally relate to, um, to what you said earlier. And you also said, um, you explained the complexity and uh, the, the community orientation and what wonderful things you are building uh, uh, with uh, Pernelope's and it's uh, not just a simple PFP. Um, and uh, I, I also love that. And um, we do a lot of uh, similar stuff, but a little bit differently. Um, but uh, what is uh, everything that you mentioned is uh, pointing uh, inwards. Uh, I mean, like, do you have any collaborations and uh, how do you, what is your plan of like interacting and coexisting with uh, other projects? Uh, well, I do think collabs are going to start to become quite a lot easier uh, because before, obviously, in the bull market, Every, collabs just meant will, will you help me sell out my project basically they, you get so many requests for collabs in yeah and this is and this is uh, this was our main um, difficulty uh, when we wanted to propose a collaboration because 
Uh, people were only interested in collaborations that were like, okay, let's make a drop and sell this much and split it this much. But a collaboration can be so much more than that. Yeah. So one one example of where we're going to go is with this land NFT. Um, we've sort of released a teaser for how it will look, and you you get a you get a house and like a garden, and as you level up, that gets bigger and the garden gets bigger. But we've tried to keep. Once you reach a certain level, there's a constant, right? There's there's a sort of area of the garden where for certain levels it's a tree and a different level where it's a fountain. But what we're building out the ability to do is maybe we have a collab with, you know, a project that's still around. That's why I think it's going to get easier because there'll be less people trying to sell um, and mint out new projects and we'll see who's actually still building and who's still here in a few months and then we can say okay you're still here we're still here we're both really trying to push nfts in a similar way how about you have your artist create something that could go in that house spot and then we could sell it for an amount of yarn on our website and you can have a cut of uh, of that sale which is a sort of a collab in a few ways. So you'll um, the the project that we work. So let's say you know you created a, a red lion eye fountain that we then made uh, into an NFT that people could buy on our website and have the option to change their NFT so that it, instead of the normal fountain, it had yours. Um, that in a way promotes your project on our website it creates a yarn sink for us because people who spend that yarn it's then out the ecosystem and it also means if you're getting yarn from us um because from from the cut of that sale just for creating one asset and it's like a lifetime of maybe that's a bit optimistic you know whoever who knows how many times they would this item would actually sell or how feasible all of this is um, but you would then keep getting this yarn which if we're a success you benefit from quite greatly and from our point of view it keeps you interested in our ecosystem so if we keep making these collabs with other projects each time we're making we're making a collab with a project that's interested in us and we're we also have the reverse as well that we're interested in them so in my eyes, that sort of method is a collab instead of, hey, can you retweet this and we'll give you five NFTs to give away? It's it's more of a long-term plan to work together rather than an instant shill and forget. Absolutely. I'm, I'm so happy you are saying that because uh, this is exactly where we have been focusing for the past two months. And uh, we have to give this alpha to the people like, Guys, if you want to punch up in any collaboration, just provide a win-win situation because every party is interested for themselves. So through selfish altruism, you can achieve greater results than just by pitching and trying to get people on board with your particular idea when everyone is interested in their project. So personally, I found it eye-opening and uh, what a beautiful way to to achieve good results and create community events, create drops, create art, create engagement in general. So um, I'm very happy you, you said that. Uh, I will definitely uh, be linking up later <laughs> um, to show you what, uh, how we are doing it particularly. And of course, it will come out uh, later on. But yeah, I absolutely agree. This is uh, totally part of the... Uh, it, it should be the way things uh, are going to be done because nothing can exist in isolation. And like nobody only has one project in their wallet. Everybody has like multiple projects. And yeah, where, where do you sort of uh, see um, uh, NFTs evolving and uh, what are your favorite uh, NFTs uh, to hold that you believe in? Well, I guess for me, it's I believe in projects where I believe in the people. Um, so, you know, 
I, I believe in my friends, I guess, is uh, a, a way to say it. So while I did say earlier, um, I was I was looking at selling a doodle and it was on my um, public account, so I, my wallet, so I didn't. Uh, I do believe in doodles. You know, Poopy's my friend, um, has been a long time since 2017. I, I know that what he does will, you know, work out i i trust that he will get there um to ah, it's hard because i know like the grand vision which i guess they they do put in roadmaps and stuff um but but i just believe that they will get there i believe he has the drive and the connections and the team to get to where they think they will get um and it's it's hard not to believe believe in your friends so you know i've got this whole friendship group and i believe in all their projects it doesn't mean i think they're gonna you know take me to the the promised land with prices it's just i believe they'll do cool things and it'll be worth holding their nfts um i also you know i i do think board apes are going to get there the tech for other side is is so far ahead um Obviously, the price is high, so it's not like I'm. A, it's secret alpha that's coming out. Uh, I just, you know, when when everyone turned up in the in this bull market, most people created their own bags. They didn't buy my bags that I'd held for ages. All those old ones I still have. So I, I'm under the assumption that when the new bull market s- starts, only a few will be picked up and then obviously there'll be all this you know historical pump and dumps where people are like oh look at this one i've just found it it was amazing it didn't no one cared about it then but i care about it now because i have 90 percent of the supply like i'm sure these sort of things will crop up but i think there'll be you know t- 10 maybe current projects that continue to be you know relevant and then there'll be the ones that are sort of held in high regard for what they've done to get us to where we are. And then everyone will create their new bags just because that's what we did this time. Uh, where do you see the things uh, sort of evolving? Like uh, you have seen uh, the NFT industry since uh, its um, infancy. Uh, how do you see things evolving now after uh, two uh, bull markets and uh, two super bear markets and the current level of innovation project the current projections and projects starting uh, how do you see how do you see the industry evolving i i struggle a bit with games i know that's always the first one people go to games but every game i see is nft first game second and pretty much the you know i'm talking about this i'm sure in discord's 2017 december how it it does it doesn't exist the way that i i could see it working which was you take something like clash of clans and then instead of buying packs from the devs you're 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 buying gems and buying the packs with gems. You know, all, all these mobile games have gems and that's the sort of thing that you're buying um, with with cash. But instead, you're buying that and then getting it, but you're not buying it directly from the devs. The devs get a cut and the rest goes to the ecosystem and then people are playing with it. And I, that, that was the route I saw. And the only issue is bots. When... When people can just pay to win, when in reality, pay, paying to win is needed because they need to fund the other, the, the trickle down economics that fails in the real world. I think would work in a mobile game style NFT game. So I think I think that sort of thing might work if they do it that way. Or the 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 majority of the others, I I wait to be. I'm not going to say they won't work. I just wait to be convinced. Um, I'm not sure. Just making everything in Grand Theft Auto an NFT is actually in any way making the game better. Um, because I saw with, you know, 
I played quite a lot of RuneScape as a kid. They they fought against money so hard, real world trading, because it genuinely made the game worse. It led to all of these bots that ruined the game for people. So it's a really tight sort of ecosystem that you need to you need to encourage people to be, you know, financially profitable, but you also need to encourage them not to be making bots and blocking them somehow or, or something along those lines. So I'm not I'm not sold on games. I'm more sold on, I guess, courses where where you see, you know, a YouTube video and they're like, oh, by the way, I've got a course too, link down below. If instead they released a thousand seats to their course and that course was an NFT, a high floor price and nothing else fishy going on, you know, owning 90% of the supply or something, that sort of indicates that the course is good because people have the option to sell it for quite high but they're not selling it because they're getting value from the course. So it's almost like a financial review of the content that you're getting. And that can work for lots of gated aspects, be it, you know, art information and anything that can be sold in a course, I think will be an NFT in time purely because it adds that extra level of, viability i guess you can look at i'm sure there'll be websites that show you who used to own it or who does own it are they a real person or are they just a hot wallet that someone split all the nfts off to how likely is this to be real and all of that um and i'm sure eventually nfts will be financial vehicles as well um there's, there's an idea that was floated to me like three years ago which was you turn an nft into a piggy bank where you're constantly putting tokens inside it and you can only get them out by actually destroying the NFT. And that kind of led to our, our airdrop in a way. Um, it's, it's slightly different and not quite uh, how it's seen. And this sort of thing is currently blocked by regulation. But as soon as that's cleared up, I can see a big sort of financial NFT holder um, becoming a thing. I sort of uh, agree there with you in a lot of your points, but uh, yeah, assuming uh, we don't talk about like a possible ways to exploit the system because this always uh, gets the, the conversation in another direction. I think uh, there is great value also in music, like, um, you know, you can uh, get tickets uh, for performances as NFTs and then you also get to have a unique collectible from your um, band, but there's also can be a very healthy secondary market that rewards the creators and the people involved uh, with the concert um, instead of like uh, unregulated dark markets. Um, and also, for example, real estates, you know, where you can buy an NFT and you get real yield, uh, like it's managed by a centralized company and it provides like i don't know rent or airbnb income and it's sort of like a yield for you uh, and for the other people that may co-own it so um i see a lot of use cases besides uh collectability uh, but gaming for sure uh, is uh, the number one uh, but as you said there still hasn't been any studios that released um not in, not a AAA game, but even an interesting game to play and be enjoyable uh, with, um, you know, the transaction and blockchain aspect taking the backseat and not uh, being the main focus of or the driver of the project. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's that has yet to to come out. I mean, like Axie went uh, a little close to that. But yeah, they had the entire population of Philippines and Venezuela uh, and Indonesia playing. So yeah, I don't know how much they were playing because they liked the game <laughs> rather than grinding daily for food or other expenses. But there were all uh, those videos of uh, the sort of Axie farms of hundreds of mobiles all just automatically playing the games and things like that because money in gaming just adds a level of complexity that I don't think we have solved yet. 
um, which is why I think it's further away than maybe people would like, uh, just purely because it's going to be so hard to crack. Yeah, but there are gaming economies that are super solid. Um, what was uh, the, this, star, this star game that exists forever? I think it's, uh, what's it called? That they did this uh, super battle. They have a super complex uh, economy system, right? And so many other games, even even the South Park game I'm playing on my mobile, it has more solid economics, uh, tokenomics than a lot of gaming projects, you know, and it's quite sad. But um, once those studios uh, get into crypto, you think we will see this level of like expertise uh, hitting the market? And if yes, would that be a catalyst, you, you think, for another uh, big run? Uh, if it happens, yeah. Um, effectively, every time we've had a big run, what we need is lots of people to come in without really knowing they've come in, and then they dig deeper. It's sort of how you, how you catch them, I guess. Um, so we saw that with Crips Kitties and Top Shot. And if the if there's another platform that comes out and it's a really fun game and people can play it and then they're like, oh, I can make money on this because. What about FIFA? What about FIFA Plus? Did you check that one out? I don't think it would work. I I've seen so you know living in the UK, basically everyone likes football, mostly, you know, at least people I know. Um, no, no one has. Literally zero people have spoken to me about it. Yeah, but um, they say that uh, the NFTs will also be like streaming passes. So you you pay five dollars, you get uh, the NFT out of secondary or primary, and you can watch all the games. And in the end, you have a nice memento and stuff like that. Well, that's a rumor still, I think. But um, yeah, I am. I am very curious to see what uh, what they will do with it because it it also looks a serious approach. And um, as you mentioned, it works on the background, and they have a game and a huge ecosystem. That, that's the thing is when they say they they say they'll do this or that. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of waiting. You know, I've I've been too hyped about too many things that the people are saying they're going to do. Um, I, I, I'd much rather wait and see it because I, I just yeah. don't trust that I'm going to see the next big wave uh, come in from that. Yeah, for sure. And um, going back to Pernelope's, um, uh, talk to us about uh, your drop today, please. Uh, what is going on there? Uh, we we actually pushed it to next Thursday uh, oh, last really? night. We decided because like we're we're ready to go. It's mm -hmm. just <laughs> so I've got two huge monitors and they're split into three each. And one of the sections here, I've got the um, Ethereum price. We've just dropped fifty quid because FTX have just gone. They've uh, Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. They've just put out a press release one minute ago. So <laughs> uh, in in this kind of situation, the way crypto is, it just doesn't feel right for the drop to be today. And we're hoping, especially with that bankruptcy now coming out, that uh, things might be a little more stable uh, come next week because it does um, it, it does. It does move pretty quick this space, but I just talk. I'll talk about the land because it it does excite me what we're doing there. So it's it's an NFT that has centralized metadata, which is sort of the first the first decision we made because it is still on Ethereum, but we plan to change it lots. So you will be able to level up your land as such, and we didn't want to have to. Um, pay to change your metadata each time so we're actually changing it in a database on the back end um, and I know some people have a, a problem with that but most of the people who think that will also not understand that 
almost every project can already change uh, your your NFT or change its image or, or stuff like that. Um, most haven't taken steps to prevent that kind of thing. So we, we're just going, you know, more formally out. For for example, the I've, I've never really seen it mentioned, but the Board Eight Mutants, their centralized metadata. If you go to their token URI, it's their website, um, which. I, I see why, because of how you, you they don't know that mutant number 10, they don't know what it will look like, because it depends on what mutant the individual, the, what ape the individual uses it with. So there's there's quite expensive calculations that go on if it were on Ethereum. Um, and having everything on chain is sort of a limiting factor to your ideas. So we're going to take in yarn, you will level it up with your your land with yarn and there'll be multiple things going on so they'll be sort of competing with each other to have the highest level land which is basically who's put the most yarn in and there'll be rewards for that there'll be sort of checkpoints you know get to level 10 get a get to level 20 get b a, a sort of reward be it an nft a physical a item of clothing merch a poster you know lots of different sort of adding to the community so that would be more the the sort of steps there would be more um akin to say moonbirds nesting whereas the pvp stuff would have higher rewards like um digging into our reserve of nfts we have quite a lot of penelopes so it would be uh looking into those um and then also we're going to have the ability to change you get your land up to a certain level say level 20 and then at level 20 you're able to sort of go down a different fork in the road where you can change your building into something entirely different so one of the confirmed buildings is the quest hall so you can pay yarn to change your house into the quest hall and the quest hall then gives you buffs in our social questing whereas just an example sort of you know that i've used before just making it up off the top of my head would be you could then instead of go, going to the quest or you could level into a barracks instead and the barracks would give your kitten extra lives in sort of a nate alex kitten arena style thing um if we were to build that out and you know there are lots of different ways within our ecosystem that we could um sort of add different buildings that add different utility um, when really what we have to see is where the nft space goes and adapt based on that what do people care about what should we be building while having our own view of where we'll go until we see these clear indicators i love it i love it man and i completely agree uh, also in our project, we have stuff that we do on chain and stuff that we do off chain and everything has its own beauty and application and you can experiment and create wonderful stuff with uh, all these tools basically, right? That's the thing. NFTs don't all have to be one thing. There is not a this is the best NFT standard. There's a there's a toolkit of NFTs because NFTs are just digital paper. That's how I see them. And paper can be many things. You can draw lovely art on paper. You can write a contract, legal contract, about how FTX is going bankrupt on a piece of paper. You can fold it up into a paper aeroplane. You can do lots of different things with paper. And all NFTs are is lots of different things digitally so there will be an nft that suits different things better so we have um our airdrops were 1155 because they're all the same so there's no need for them to be more expensive to move around and for them to be individual because they didn't need to be because their use case didn't need them to be so there'll be lots of things where companies will come in and they'll want to retain quite a lot of control over their nft and that's fine. As long as it's on Ethereum or, you know, a, a chain that's decentralized, it's still decentralized to the right point. That That's the point that matters. And then how 
projects build their own NFTs is kind of up to them. And it's up to you to decide if you meet the same values. And if you do, great, maybe you're interested in it. If you disagree with their values, you just don't get the NFT. It's sort of quite simple, I guess, there, really. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's exactly how we view it. And we use uh, all these amazing tools to to create amazing work as we see fit and it fits the work and the concept. Um, people will eventually see the people that are building with this mindset and not just pump out a collection 721 because everybody wants that and on-chain. And this is all just um, gimmicks, uh, I think. It's not uh, serious building. Um, I completely agree. Um, what do you say? Um, what do you think about the current situation and the whole crash with FTX? First of all, were you were you affected at all? Uh, I do have some funds in uh, NFTX. I I did see this coming, I guess, before others. So I I split the money, split the money up. I needed a certain amount in the bank, so I withdrew maybe four or five days ago withdrew to the bank and then i the rest i converted to uh usdt and withdrew that to you know just a, just any old wallet and i guess the reason i had to i actually had pounds on a <laughs> on ftx it wasn't crypto it wasn't not your crypto not your keys it was fiat that i had sitting there and it's because uk banks are a bit iffy if you just withdraw loads into it from uh so i guess i was at risk because of the uk's banking system i've had experience i've literally had banks shut down because i withdrew too much in one go um so i did i did have funds there and the 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 funds that i withdrew to the bank never arrived changed it to usdt and usdc when they were you know when the whole bahamas stuff happened um, but I, I've kind of, it, it feels like that might be gone or I, d I don't know what the bankruptcy does with that. But this does look like it's more lunar fallout. And we, we're going to suffer in crypto because this is going to be blamed as a failure of crypto when really it was a failure of the, you know, old the old banking system. FTX, who's funded that? Who's... <laughs> who's accepted loans based on FTT? So they they massively over -le leverage themselves by giving out loans and saying, "Oh, you can have FTT as the backing." So, but we've just created Yarn. The liquidity is so low. I think there was thirty one uh, thirty one dollars of liquidity. Someone put into the pool because we can't do it for legal reasons and we've actually told people to only claim it when you can spend it so no one's really gone to set up a pool but it yarn was at 40 cents i think um for one and then we have uh, we have a total cap it will take 15 years to get there but it will be two billion which puts us as a, at a market cap of 800 million so the equivalent would be us then giving out yarn that we just created and getting like a $200 million loan based on some yarn that we just created. And these these sophisticated bankers just went, yeah, right, yeah, I'll take that. That makes complete sense. And it just probably was less scammy than the shit they're buying it every day, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was deemed as a great improvement than all of that. <laughs> I've watched the big short, you know, the, the shit piled in shit on shit, I think is how they described it. Yeah, and this is exactly what um, crypto solves. I don't know, man. Personally, I'm, I'm, in my core, I'm a really optimistic person. I really hate pessimism and saying that things are going to worse. I think everything is going to better. Humanity works less hours every week. Uh, we live longer and longer. So collectively, I mean, like the um, the global, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the global um, quality of life uh, is 
gradually and steadily increasing. It's not perfect everywhere. A lot of regions are awful, but yeah, I mean, like it's uh, and technology and all of that uh, accelerates um, accelerates this fast. And uh, I don't want to think crypto uh, will just die or it will do bad. I think all of this is a great wake up call, maybe for people to take self custody um, into consideration and start using it when this brings them to use DeFi, maybe some more robust solutions on DeFi. Uh, I don't know, maybe some kind of regulation, even though I don't agree with regulation, but it can be good overall uh, because I don't know if it can be centralized regulation, but it can be like self-regulation or decentralized tax or I don't know what EU wants to do sounds semi okay i don't know so yeah i like to think about it like that every projection shows that there will be uh, 10 times more uh, growth on nfts by 2028 from today that's not too far away um so yeah i want to think like that you know but the market is ugh, fucking me up big time <laughs> especially right now it's it's hard it's um it it does seem to be more fallout from luna exploding and ftx or almeida were over exposed to it and they tried to hide it instead of it coming out all at the same time um DeFi is obviously the solution but are they going to let us have that i i will say i'm still perfectly bullish that crypto is going to be the future and i can tell you that wasn't the case before you know in, in the 2018 bear i genuinely thought at times this is over what are we doing Mate, there's no way an automatic system will lose to a manual spreadsheet <laughs> that uh, boomers uh, uphold uh, on closed networks there's just Absolutely no way this is going to happen. I don't know how fast and how it will work, but the the economic system is just uh, terrible and inefficient, and it works nine to five on specific yes. countries and time zones and no weekends. Yeah, <laughs> it's just uh, it's just impossible. And Ethereum is still over a grand. We're, yeah, we're, and I find this uh, incredible. Like it held so well, right? I I sold quite a lot of Ethereum to buy a house before it hit a grand. So for me, <laughs> like we're we're still at levels that before the bull market we hadn't even reclaimed. And after all of this, after sucking in so much VC money luring in so many people and then just blowing it all up with Luna and then all the knock-on effects of free AC and Celsius and BlockFi and FTX. We're still above where I sold to buy a house. How? It, it's Crypto's just got to be the future. People believe crypto's got to be the future with that level of support still, surely. Yeah. Um... Uh, at, at this point, uh, I would like to say uh, thanks, guys, for sticking with us. Uh, we were reaching around 30 listeners earlier, and Twitter ragged us. It's difficult uh, to recover. But we will open the mic uh, now for anyone if, you, if they have any questions uh, before we wrap it up. Uh, so if you would like to just chat and ask something, just raise your hand, okay? Um, so, uh, yeah, man, uh, this, uh, this crash is horrible. And the Luna crash before that was horrible. But if shit like that happened in like 2017, okay, it was impossible because of the numbers. But like, even the Mount Gox, when, when it happened back then, it was just a little small scandal about some guys that lost money online. It wasn't like, you know, government talk <laughs> in any way. 
And uh, right now, governments are talking about it. Uh, it's being reported on the news. People are following <laughs> the guys running from Bahamas or <laughs> Daekwon and uh, people reporting. I think it's, uh, it's, it's fucking hilarious. And it's, um, it, it is the future. I mean, like, uh, uh, money is just like, you know, uh, accounting of work units and social interactions. So why not just evolve on that idea? I mean, like, obviously the, 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 the closed spreadsheets uh, from country to country didn't work very well, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've in the past paid, um, back when I was in gambling, I would pay quite a lot of people in India to try and make bots that would do my work for me, basically. And that was so hard to do well or for a, without a huge fee. Crypto completely solves that issue, really. Uh, as long as I'm not sure what the current state of crypto is in India. I know they've they've banned it a couple of times before, so I'm not sure if they would be happy to receive it. But you know, it's just so easy. It it sounds dumb to say these words out loud, but the world the world is global now, and yeah. money needs to be global. Yeah, now we, uh, as a project, we are hiring people from many countries in the world and the payments are so easy. And the people that we are hiring sometimes and we are paying with crypto that we're not used to it, they are mind blown how, how simple and fast it is. And they are receiving real dollars and they have, uh, uh, they have in access to infrastructure to, to actually exchange it and they can use it in their real life. So the next uh, the next level is just to be using it from your phone, man, directly instead of like sending it to a fucking bank and a bank does it for you. You know, you can spend it from your phone directly as a credit card with um, uh, with Apple Pay and whatever, you know. Uh, I'm, I've been using Monolith over a year now. I'm just spending USDC in my uh, uh, die actually, because it's cheaper to load, but yeah, I'm, I'm spending Dai for all my needs. You know, it has like a hundred k year limit, which is uh, not. You don't need more than that. I know some people live ex extravagant lives, but I'm I'm pretty content with with the limits, and it hasn't, uh, you know, uh, it hasn't um, restricted me in any ways. Is it uh, self custody? Do you have the keys? Uh, no, you have a wallet that you can send money onto, I, either stablecoin or Ethereum, and this is the wallet that you just uh, use to, to load the card. So this wallet is the only wallet that can send money, and they are like like you send USDC to the card. So basically, you're not sending it to the card. It just automatically sells it for you and loads the card with the currency you have selected, like euros. For example, because I have a euro account, I I watched uh, Vitalik. But but it's a self custody, man. I mean, it's uh, your wallet, your keys. I mean, you have your your keys for yeah, seed yeah. Price. On so that it's wallet, self, yeah. that wallet is self custody. Yeah. But yeah. The yeah. You send into your well. Ethereum address, then you kind of transfer to to the fiat. Yeah, on the cards, and you pay with it. Yeah, I saw it. Vitalik was like suggesting it on an interview, and I was like, "Does that shit work?" And it actually does. And what is actually mind-blowing is when I had trouble with a few transactions, I just popped in the Discord, <laughs> like you would on any project, and they just helped me out immediately, you know. And now uh, when you do the chat from the app, it also works. So, yeah, I'm, I'm super Yeah, happy I have recent it. actual experience. It was, like, really, really well uh, done. I mean, support was almost <laughs> instant. Easier than my bank, for sure. Yeah, totally. I, I had the crypto.com card uh, purely for cashback, but that wasn't self-custody. That was that was their sort of own account that I could send money into. So, But a self-custody one is much, much better. That's actually DeFi, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is, but, but I mean, once, you, once you have it uh, in fiat on the card, it's like not in your possession, yeah? When they oh, go bankrupt, you will lost your fiat. But when you, when you have your ETH there, 
uh, on the Ethereum address itself custody. But so you can just uh, exchange in small chunks as you as you like. I see. Okay. You don't even have to exchange. I mean, I always load uh, stable coins, so it is really cool. But yeah, it really works. And why this cannot work without a card? You know, just with the wallet and the and the chip on on the smartphone that do the transactions now. Yeah, I only take my phone anywhere anyway, so... Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's it for today, man. Thank you thank you so much for uh, joining us and uh, sharing your story and the project uh, with us and uh, all, all the wonderful uh, insights. I, I also own... Uh, uh, Pernelope, so I'm, I'm very excited and I will definitely dive uh, deeper now into the project. Cool, thanks Thanks for having me on, it's been fun. All right, uh, cheers man, thanks for coming. All right, Dudley, I think that's it. Uh, thanks everyone for coming and uh, w listening later on. Unfortunately, we were a little bit wrong, so we cut in two. Uh, but this has been great and uh, we'll see you again on Monday.